Hello, welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers, where we are continuing work on our fleet here in the uh, wonderful vista, I guess valley, lake, pond, something like that. Um, we are here continuing work on our fleet that we've been working on for quite a little while now. We have a couple utility vehicles, light scout ship, uh, medium fighter, heavy fighter, and uh, last episode we made this bomber. Um, which are rocketeer ship or you know some, something um, basically the inverse of a fighter right so it has more rockets than guns so that's what we made last episode uh, this episode we are going to be working on another small ship design um, this one's going to be I think uh, some sort of cargo mover or um, uh, something with like some front landing gear I think to pick up craft and or cargo and move them to maybe a better location um, i think that'd be a pretty cool ship to work on that'll help maybe round out the industrial side a little bit more and um yeah without further ado we'll just go ahead and start uh, going through the speed build so you guys can see how that turns out if i can uh, succeed in that goal hello everyone welcome to the speed build portion of today's space engineers construction um here you kind of see a little bit in the background uh, i ended up building two ships for this episode uh the first one i'm not too happy with so i ended up kind of abandoning it at some point and then starting this new variant um you know the the original goal was to build some sort of transport or moving cargo ship right um and so that's what that one kind of is back there and we'll probably talk a little bit more about it during the, uh, or I guess after the speed build. But I ended up changing my idea a little bit and going into more of a uh, cargo, uh, kind of like a merge block transport ship. And maybe even if you want to add a, var a variant in there, you could probably make them little drop pods. But uh, the idea behind this thing is that I wanted it to actually carry um, inventory space and move cargo around. So the best way that I decided to come up to do that was to use merge blocks. And that many people use merge blocks, in my opinion, to temporarily join two structures together. A lot of the times people will use it to join kind of um, two larger structures more permanently together and then they get rid of the merge blocks and, and then you have a single grid, right? This is a, a good trick for elevators, raising platforms, larger doors, um, anything like that, right? Where, where you're trying to combine two grid items. However, I like using them in the sense of um, kind of temporary attachments onto a ship as well. Um, now, you know, the, the main negative side to merge blocks is that you can't transfer cargo between them. Um, but the main positive side is that they also, in my opinion, are a little bit more stable in flight and kind of fully lock your two grids together so that you don't get any weird clang explosions in the background, right? Um, that's just kind of a, a trade-off that I'm, I'm willing to accept. This is, this is not supposed to be, uh, the vehicle necessarily transferring cargo or, um, you know, docking up at a station to unload, right? This is to transfer the actual cargo container itself rather than the individual pieces, because, uh, I think that's just kind of a neat idea. I find cargo in space engineers, a lot of people kind of do it in a more, traditional sense where they you know have items inside of a cargo container and they simply move the items from one cargo container to another one i always loved the idea of well there's items in a cargo container let's just move the cargo container like there's no need to move the items inside of it because we already know what's inside the cargo container and if the cargo container has what we need then we'll just move it i think that's a a fine solution um it's not really great in practice, obviously. It's a little um, redundant based on how the, the systems of Space Engineers ended up working in the long term. But uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling, I guess, and, and defending my actions. I just thought it looked cool, right? Um, we could eventually add kind of uh, parachutes onto these two, and these could be almost just cargo drop pods that you might be able to kind of drop by in an area and then keep flying. Um, and we, there could also be a variant of this ship, maybe as a small crew drop pod as well. That might be kind of neat to have kind of like seats hanging underneath there that would um, kind of release with a parachute and drop people down. 
that would be I don't know pretty cool and, and I might make that variant if enough people are interested in this little design um, but the main functionality of it is that nothing can touch the things hanging down below so that's why we space them out we have a, a spaced block in between each of those uh, connection points that way they when I release them they are remaining kind of their own grid item and they just kind of release and let go and fall to the ground or if you're over land you kind of jot them off and then maybe a small little tug tug like uh, ship can go ahead and pick them up and move them to the correct location plug them in who knows um, it's just a rough concept right I don't know how effective this is but I for me to have a full fleet I kind of needed a little bit more of logistics um, some cargo moving kind of vessels. I might make that little tug thing that I mentioned a bit ago. Um, that was technically kind of the original plan. Um, and I did make one in the past that I thought was pretty successful. So I might look at um, kind of reviving that one. Um, and it's just a small little craft to move medium sized cargo containers. Uh, large cargo containers to me are something that should be on a large grid ship. Um, something that's probably too heavy for a small grid ship to move e effectively anyways. So I'm fine with that being just a medium and small grid kind of transfer here. And and I, th I think it looks pretty cool. So the overall design is we're using the industrial cockpit. We have about five batteries on here just because we have so many thrusters because depending on your settings of the server, your inventory spaces are gonna expand exponentially uh, a little bit. So I definitely needed to have a lot of power onto this thing because I don't know what other people are gonna have their settings to. I generally have mine up maybe times two at most. Um, I'm a little bit more in favor of the grueling um, grind, I guess. And, and I think that comes to, I want people to be able to earn their uh, bases. I want people to feel like when they lose a ship, they're losing something. They're not just like, oh, well, we'll just 3D print another one in two minutes and, and we'll be good to go. You know, I think getting to that point and then once you're there, you should be rewarded for it. You shouldn't You shouldn't be immediately there with a bob system or something, just making you know the most efficient things at first. No, I, I want you to, to struggle and, and to problem solve around those things. But at least, at least that's my philosophy when it comes to uh, um, creative building games. Um, but as I said, it's got plenty of power on it. Hey, it's got uh, four vertical thrust, it's got four for uh, rear thrust, main thrusters on there for proportion. It's got a, it's got four braking thrusts. Um, laterally, it's still using small thrusters. Um, I'm always in atmospheric, uh, you know, I'm always a big fan of, you know, tilting your ship to allow some of the other thrusters and other locations to kind of pick up the slack and uh, make it actually look like it's kind of flying rather than being just a VTOL helicopter. Um, so that's why, uh, we kind of just stick with small thrusters on the side just to help minimize the drifting effect on there. The overall hull shape, because we can't connect a lot of the internal pieces, right? Because I want to keep them as separate grids. We're just doing uh, almost like an umbrella. So it's just this overarching shape that's going to protect a decent amount of the internals from damage uh, and loose bullet fire maybe. Um, but of course, anything sustained on this thing, it's going to be in trouble. It's always got to do a crash test, right? You just got to see what it looks like when it's skipping across the ice. Um, a lot of little, um, on the underside, we're doing a lot of kind of framework, um, connecting these thrusters up to the wing pieces so that the thrusters are connected, not just to um, each other, but also bit to the wing so that if you do lose a thruster, you don't lose three thrusters, right? You want to have a, a decent amount of connection points to these things. And, and that kind of adds a little bit to the industrial vibe, in my opinion. Cover up the batteries just a little bit, you know? But this is, this is a lightly armored vehicle. It's not really meant to go into a war zone. This is, you know, a logistic vi vehicle like this to me is, is more like, this is what you bring to set up your FOB uh, after it's already been cleared out. And really you shouldn't be expecting much kind of fire coming its way. It does have one defensive turret, just in case it needs it. But um, otherwise, this is not an engagement vehicle. This is really solely a transport vehicle. And you can just tell that from the overall lack of um, design and, and, and safety features, I guess, on it. But that's that's it for this this field build section. We'll, we'll, 
we'll go ahead and talk about it in real time. I know it, I didn't show up painting it or anything like that, but we did the, do the two color uh, painting scheme on here. But I want to show you guys what it looks like in real time and get your feedback down below in the comments because I always love that uh, and that's why I enjoy building my own fleet. All right, so here we are taking a look here at the, I guess, uh, cargo ship, medium cargo ship. Um, this thing is uh, it's pretty cool looking. It's, it's almost like a small turtle-like design. We have a lot of the same design language as we do with some of the other vehicles. Um, a little bit boxier, a little bit bigger maybe um, than in some regard. Also, the way this thing sits on the landing pad is kind of interesting. It's got... Um, Kind of a little bit of an overhang on the backside. Now this isn't overhanging too much, so I'm not really worried about it. And I can still, you know, fully walk underneath this uh, this vehicle, which is again exactly what I want. I want to be able to walk around on this pad without stepping off of it, uh, since this kind of marquees out um, everywhere uh, for I guess the space for this thing to dock. It's got uh, a little bit more landing gears to it because I um, am kind of trying to get across how much heavier this one could potentially be with the three medium cargo containers inside uh, attached by merge block only. And, uh, you know, you could, if you want, to attach some parachutes on these. Uh, again, let go the merge block, open up the parachutes, and um, off they go, right? So they could just simply fall fall to the ground and be perfectly safe, which would be pretty cool to see um, kind of emergency supplies coming out with a method like that. Um, otherwise, we got a standard connector here in case we need to fill up um, the cargo container that is attached to its main hull. So it does have a little bit of that cargo space. All of our ships will have a medium cargo container on there just so it has some of that inventory capacity. Um, we got a little bit of a viewport, uh, kind of airflow uh, entryway there, right in front of the reverse thrusters. Uh, the armor is just kind of sloped over the side as like a big umbrella, like I said earlier. Um, plenty of downward thrust, uh, one lateral thrust on each way. I guess I was wrong in the speed build. Uh, I mentioned that we use small thrusters, but I think, yes, we did use large thrusters on this. Um, on each side because again this is a heavier vehicle so i did maybe account for that a little bit better i think this time around than uh, i originally thought so hopefully it should be a little less drifty we get a small defensive turret on here just in case this again isn't really a combat ship uh, this is really just a deterrent more so than anything um some interesting ventilation kind of areas in the uh, upper parts of the armor Cool little winglets coming off the tail here. And a bunch of understructure support uh, for the landing gear and the wings just to help tie the ship together, right? Because I don't want it to be so vulnerable that one shot will rip the thing in half, right? Because um, initially, uh, you know, this core spine, if this gets shot out, it would get cut in half. Um, but now with the way everything is connected, it shouldn't do that. So we'll go ahead and make a copy of this and put it in the air. And take a little bit of a tour around. So you can see it's, it's pretty peppy in terms of acceleration. Now these cargo containers are empty. So keep that in mind. Um, that's a big factor and that's gonna really affect its performance as we go through. Uh, we got plenty of power to uh, make a lot of these turns. And you know that I do bank when I am turning. Uh, that way, a lot of the downward thrust can be kind of translated to lateral thrust vector here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty looking ship, I think. It, it definitely looks the part of a transport of some kind. And I did mention that I might turn this into maybe a uh, small troop drop pod ship. I think that would be uh, cool to do. Um, and with the way that we designed this, I almost want to say that we could potentially have a few variants of this craft, right? We could, because there's merge blocks in the middle there, make some sort of um, shell that this thing could carry around and swap out depending on what it's doing, whether that's carrying the three 
medium crates, or we could swap that out to uh, have a little bit of a drop pod for uh, people in there. So that's that's one advantage, I think, of doing merge blocks, right? You can kind of create these variants and these things. So it's a little drifty, but uh, you know, all my vehicles so far in the series have been kind of like that. I haven't really tested any of its defensive capabilities. So why don't we go ahead and park this thing a little bit of a safe difference and maybe some of this debris field out here. You can see just how many times I've crashed vehicles flying around and testing them. All right, so that one's parked. We'll grab, uh, let's use the light fighter. So we'll just uh, copy one of them out here. Make sure I'm selected. Okay, so this one, only has four Gatling guns. I say only, it's kind of a lot in a way. So I'll do a little bit of a strafing fire on this and we'll see what happens. And okay. So a decent amount of stuff fell off there, right? We lost uh, basically two of our main engines, uh, one vertical engine as well and one of the cargo containers so again this is a very lightly armored vehicle but um, for all the damage that we did go through the middle there it did survive it didn't get cut in half or anything like that there goes another drop pod kind of like that boop you could i guess in theory attach um some mines to this as well okay now it's starting to drift so i think that's about its limit you can see its middle kind of falling apart at that point and boom all right so you know it can take a few hits and of course if that thing was shooting back at this vehicle um this one is you know still relatively squishy as well so it would be a little bit of a high risk chase down maybe because uh, that that one might be honestly a little bit more uh, uh, versatile in terms of speed and acceleration than this one is but that's it that's it for this episode um i do want to talk about this a little bit this is the failed design uh that we originally came up or that i kind of built um for a couple hours um this was going to be kind of like that front grabber i was talking about uh, it ended up being a lot bigger than I wanted it to be, so it's not really like a tug in any capacity. Um, it had pistons up here that would extend out and kind of push these forward so that it could grab things maybe a little bit at a safer different uh, distance, or maybe if it was a little bit of an awkward situation with the cockpit and the, and the thrusters, this could extend out. But, you know, Lord Clang... Um, kind of makes this a bit of a mess. So I don't think that's gonna work long run uh, either. So, bit of a shame, bit of a shame. Anyways, if you guys are enjoying the series, as always, definitely subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below on what you think of the little, uh, I guess we could call this a terrapin or turtle or something like that design over here on the left. Uh, if you will have any ideas or concepts for ships that you might want to see with our fleet, definitely let me know that as well. And with that, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.